But I wanted to talk today about what we're talking about today is the principle of the path. And I'm not going to tell you what the principle of the path is until the end of the message. But well, that's, the, that's the thing we're talking about. And predicting our future. Predicting our future. And uh, a lot of people are like, okay, Mike, you're going crazy. We can't predict the future. And that's true. In so many cases, we are very, very bad at predicting the future. Let me give you just a few things that I have written down here. Somebody, DECA Recording Company in 1962, Dad, DECA Recordings Company said this. They said, the Beatles have no future in show business. <laughs> the Beatles have no future in show business. And that guy is going to be laughed at for the rest of eternity. Because yeah. <laughs> In 1963, the Beatles were the biggest band in America, in the world. Not only America, in the world. Uh, Charlie Chaplin, everyone knows who Charlie Chaplin is. And she, he's known for being in, being an actor, being in cinema. But he said the cinema is little more than a fad. He thought it would die out in a few years. So he was looking for other stuff to do when the cinema, when the theater shut down. <laughs> Uh, the theater shut down now because of COVID, but I believe that it's going to be a big thing forever, forever. And it's not just a fad. Some, many scouts in, in, in 2000, Tom Brady was coming out of Michigan. Many scouts said that, well, one in particular said this. It says, he lacks a really strong arm and he can't drive the ball down the field. Tom Brady lacks a really strong arm and can't drive the ball down the field. He's competing today for, for the most away games in playoff history, game wins in playoff history. He's got more Super Bowls than anybody, <laughs> one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time because he came from Michigan. But he was, he was drafted in the sixth round of that draft. The sixth round, that means at 30, at 30 picks a draft. At 30 picks a round, times six, he was drafted way, 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 200 some, 300 some people ahead of him. We are not good at predicting the future. We're not good at predicting the future. But what if there's a way that you can predict yours? What if you knew what was going to happen tomorrow? A week from now, a month from now, a year from now. I think that most of us have been closer to it than we think. You see, I've heard many of you guys say things like this. I should have seen that coming. We said that before. I should have predicted my own future. I should have seen that coming. I should have known. We have all found ourselves in a mess. We've all looked around and thought, I don't know why I'm surprised. I should have seen this coming. And there are, there are two kinds of people in this world. People who, would, who could have read their future. People who could have read their future. Those are people who say, I should have seen this coming. And the other kind of person can predict other people's future. And they don't say, I should have seen this coming. Here's what they say, Dad. They say, you should have seen that coming. <laughs> you should have seen that coming. So there's two people. There's people who say, who are willing to say, I screwed up and I should have seen that coming. And then there's people who like to say, ah, oh, you should have seen that coming. And I think the problem with, them, with the Christian church too many times is there's too many of the latter. And too, or too little of the latter and too, too many of, of that, of the, of the, you should have seen that coming. There's too many, too little people saying, I should have seen that coming. I could have fixed it. I should have sought God harder. I should have done this better. And so many people saying, you should have sought God better. You should have done this. Everyone saw it but you. You have watched a friend from afar and you thought, this isn't going to end pretty. You have tried to tell them, everyone has tried to tell them, but they haven't listened. 
they couldn't see it for themselves. They couldn't see it for themselves. And the train wreck that everyone saw coming has not happened. And they are like, why didn't you tell me? You told them. <laughs> because everyone likes to tell somebody else that their train wreck is going to happen. But they didn't hear it. And here they are. Why didn't you tell me? I can't believe he broke up with me. Really? He's been breaking up with you for six months. I can't believe it. He broke up with me. Everyone saw it but you. I can't believe it. I gained 30 pounds. Really? You can't believe you gained 30 pounds because everybody who watched your dietary habits could have told you you were going to gain 30 pounds. Do you know what you've been eating? <laughs> I don't know how I got in this much debt. Really? Everybody watching you knew that you were spending on that credit card every day. Like, you could have predicted it. You know that if you keep using that credit card, that you're going to go in debt. You know that you can't afford your electric bill, but you're still willing to pay for that cable bill that you don't, know, that you don't need. Everybody sees it but you. Why don't we see it? You seriously were able to predict their future, but you can't do it for yourself. As I talked about this, someone just popped in your head. You all know exactly who I'm talking about. You all know exactly someone that you've been watching thinking, I know where they're going. I know what's going to happen to them. I know their future. You all know somebody you all know somebody, and you all know that there's been circumstances circumstance in your life that you missed, that you could have seen coming. You could have predicted your future. You could have changed your path, your direction, your decisions, and it would have fixed your future. So why is it that you can see what they can't see, and they can't see what you can see? Why is it so easy for us to see that they're going to mess up but not see that we're messing up. Why is it so easy? Why is it you can see what they can't see and they can see what you can't see? Sometimes we can see it. We know where we're headed financially, physically, spiritually, or morally. But we decide to turn our head from our crystal ball and act like we can't see into our future. Then, when we arrive at the destination that we knew we were headed to, we act shocked, surprised. The truth is, though, we kind of knew what was going to happen. We can predict the future more often than we, can, than we admit. So, we can tell our future, but can we fix our problems? I'll tell you this. And some of you are not going to like it. This is in, I don't know if you guys can see the screen today, but most of our problems can't be fixed. So we can predict our future, but we can't fix our problems. I've been told Doug Pitney can fix anything. Anything that breaks at this church and this building, I can call Doug, and by tomorrow, with the right finances, he will have it looking as good as new. My dad can fix most cars. If something breaks in your car, he can replace it, and by tomorrow, it will be running perfectly. If I have tech issues, something with a computer, I can call Jason, and bam, it's fixed, oftentimes in minutes. They can fix it like it never happened. You are not a car. You are not a computer. You, your computer has memory. You have memories. I'll say that again. Your computer has memory, but you have memories. So memories 
make it hard for us to fix ourselves. You are more complex than all that stuff, than the computer, the church building, the wall, the, the car. God made you bigger than that. You can cope with your problems. You can overcome your problems. You can learn from your problems. But our past is our past, and it will follow us. It will be our story for the rest of our life. And that's the bad news. We live with our failures. We live with our mistakes. But we don't have to let them drive us. We don't have to continue in that path. And what it is, when we look ahead and we see that we're continuing in that path, we've got to turn around. We've got to change something. We've got to change something. So that's the bad news. Most of our problems can't be fixed. But I don't like to end on a negative note. So here's the good news. While our problems can't be fixed, most of our problems can be avoided. Most of our problems can be avoided. They can be fixed, but they can be avoided. So again, we're talking about predicting our future. The more we avoid, the less we have to deal with. Later, the more we avoid, the less we have to deal with later. And we will be dealing with them because as we've discussed, they're with us for the rest of our lives. So how do we avoid them? How do we avoid problems? The answer is predicting our future. I know you think I'm crazy, but we are going to get into this thing called the principle of the path. Just stick with me. This is so easy, and we've all heard it. We have all applied it to everyone else, but we struggle to get it in our own lives. The Bible talks about this too. Let's read it in Matthew 7. Matthew 7, and it says, Judge not that you not be judged, for with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged, and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there's a log in your own eye, you hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So that's what he's saying. He's, it's so easy for you to see that they're screwing up, that they're messing up, but not you. Why? That's why I've been talking about this whole, so far, this whole message. It's, why are we doing that? Why? Are we judging others and not, our, not ourselves? When the truth is that if we could just judge ourselves as much as we judge others, we would be predicting our future. But we wouldn't be predicting our future because what would happen is we would change things and then our future, well, we wouldn't be on the path to the future that we're actually headed to, but we would be on another path. So we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be predicting the future would be fixing our future. So it's not about predicting our future. It's about fixing our future. And that's all about the path that we're on. So how do we do it? We judge ourselves like we judge others. How do we avoid problems? The answer is strictly judging ourselves. I can, I can see this coming. He's going... I'm sorry. I can see this coming. He's going to be broke because he keeps buying coffee every morning. We fail to realize that we are going to be broke because we buy a burger every night. So we'd love to talk about the guy buying coffee at Starbucks every morning, but don't talk about our quarter pounder habit at McDonald's every night. We fail to realize that we are going to be broke because of the burger. We are quick to help Others fix their issues. Well, we are struggling with our own issues. We don't like 
what we are getting out of our lives. We don't like the way our bodies look. We don't like the way our bodies feel. We don't like the way our relationships flow. We don't like the way life feels so empty and unaccomplished. We don't like the way it seems we are too busy. We don't like our product. The problem isn't our product, though. It, if we look at it, if we look at and into our future and just look at the path we're on, we'll see that the problem is the path. The problem isn't, isn't the product, it's the pattern. The problem isn't the product, it's the path. It's not the product, it's the pattern. It's the decisions that we continually make. Everyone can see where you're going but you. My problem isn't that I'm fat. My problem is, is that I keep eating too much. My problem isn't that I'm poor. My problem is, is my wife keeps spending too much. No, it's not my wife. But because that would be judging her, not me. I spend too much too. Our problem isn't our problem. Our problem is our habits. Our problem is our decision. Our problem is everything but what we're blaming. But Michael, I've been praying. I read the Bible and it's not fixing it. You're not going to avoid problems by knowing how to avoid problems. You avoid problems by actually avoiding the problem, by actually doing it. Knowing something has never fixed anything. <laughs> That's so good. I don't even know why I didn't put it on the screen. Knowing something has never fixed anything. So I can read it all. It doesn't matter how much I read it. It doesn't matter how much I pray and ask God. I have to apply it to my life. Matthew 7, 24 says, <coughs> says Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man. And we're going to get into the rest of that story later, but... But just that scripture, the beginning, of, and it's actually, it's a, it's a story of, it's a very popular story in the church world. This story, Dad, if you know this story, I don't know if you know where I'm going with this one. But this story is so popular that if you've been in church for any time in your life, you sing a song about this story. And we'll get into it in a little bit. But this is, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man. That and does them is so, so crucial that we forget. So we read it like this. Everyone who hears these words of mine will be like a wise man. And so we come to church and we read the Bible and we think, how come life isn't getting fixed? How come I'm still fat? How come I'm still lacking in relationships? How come financially I'm just not right? How come... All life seems like a battle. It's because and does them is not in our vocabulary. We forget to do them. We know so much. We know how to fix everything. If we don't know, we have, the, we have Google, we have the Bible, we have everything at our fingertips. Everything. Everything on our fingertips, but we don't do them. To fix the problem, we have to change the pattern. Einstein said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Too often, we want to blame everything else. Everything but us. We blame the tree for, for, for producing no fruit. We refuse to admit that. Maybe it's because we don't water it enough. Maybe we haven't fertilized it. Maybe we haven't worked at it. Maybe it needs trimming. And we have trimmed it. We blame the tree for producing no fruit, but it's our fault. We refuse to admit that we just spend... I'm sorry. We want to blame 
the job for not having enough money. We refuse to admit that we just spend too much. It's not about the job we have and how much they pay us, but it's about how much we spend. It's my genetics that makes me fat. Have you seen my parents? It's my genetics that make me fat. Have you seen my parents? No, it's not your genetics that make you fat. It's because you eat too much. And guess what? Your parents are fat because they eat too much too. Like, it's not that hard. It's the problem is our pattern, not our product. The problem is our path. It's the decisions and the choices that we make. We're not making the right ones. And we can see that if we just look. And I told you, we can, I proved to you that you can see it because I told you that you've seen it in others. If you see it in others and nobody knows you as good as you know you, how is it that you haven't seen it in yourself? How is it that we haven't seen it in ourselves? The product isn't the product. The problem isn't the product, it's the pattern. We live and die with the choices we made. George Jones sang a song, living and dying with the choices I made. It's George Jones' song. Uh, it's, he has a whole bunch of hits, but it's probably the only one I know. Um, he's a little bit older than me, but a lot of you guys know George Jones and that song. And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get a drink. <coughs> George Jones saying, living and dying with the choices we make. Your, you change your problems by changing your path. I hope she doesn't watch this because I'm about to talk about my sister-in-law. <laughs> my sister-in-law, through the death of my father-in-law, she, I heard her complain to my wife one day. And she said, I feel distanced. I feel like mom doesn't call me. She calls you or the other sister. I feel like, like your kids are closer to the other sisters than they are to mine. I feel like, like we're just distanced. Like we're not loved with the same. And it was hard for me. I bit my lip. I bit my tongue. And I didn't say anything. But when Carrie hung up, I said, she realized that She's the first one to leave when we have families, when we have family functions. She's the first one to leave. She'll leave Christmas early because, because of a reason that none of us agree with. We all have the same reason to leave, but we say. Does she realize that it's the pattern, it's the decisions she's made that's got her there? It's so easy to see for me but not her, and I want to tell her, I can predict your future. You're going to distance yourself farther if you continue the pattern you're on. If you want to fix it, you have to fix your problems. You are the reason for what you're complaining about. I love her. I love her. I don't want her to see that, but then I kind of do because I hope that she can see that my heart is that I want her to fix the pattern. You are a result of where you're going. You're, you're, the, where you're going is a result of you. <coughs> Only you can change it. Your problems are a result of the direction you're moving. And only you can change it. Don't tell me you can't get up and read the Bible in the morning because you are not a morning person. My wife is really bad at this. <coughs> Don't tell me you're not a morning person, and that's why you don't get up. My wife does read the Bible. I'm not saying she's bad at that, but she says, I'm not a morning person. Don't tell me you're not a morning person. None of us are morning people. Nobody wants to get up at that time. 
but we set patterns to get ourselves up at that time. Don't tell me you're not a mourner. If you're white, you can't change that. If you can't wake up in the morning, it's because you stayed up too late. Being a morning person is not an ethnicity. It's a decision, is what I'm saying. You can change things that you can change. If you can't wake up in the morning, it's because at 9 o'clock in the evening, you were drinking coffee and Mountain Dew. <laughs> Not being a morning person isn't, isn't an ethnicity you can't change. The problem isn't the product, it's the pattern. If I see you drinking Mountain Dew two hours before bedtime, I can predict that you're not going to bed at bedtime. If I see you watching a television show that is high packed and full of energy 30 minutes before bedtime, I can predict you're going to have trouble falling asleep. If you're going to have trouble falling asleep, then you're going to not be wanting to wake up in the morning. It's not the product. It's the pattern. You're the reason you're not a morning person. You got me? Do you understand or am I being insane? It's a path that you're on. You're causing your problems. Don't tell me you're not a good student so you can't go to college. You're not a good student because you procrastinate. You're not a good student because you don't do your homework. You don't change your wisdom without changing your input. You decide what road you are going, you decide what road you're going down. You decide what choices you make. You're not a good student because you don't study. You're not a good student because you haven't tried. You're not a good student. And I understand I have a kid who's got like disabilities and he struggles a lot harder than others. But he's still going to make it because we're pushing him and he's going to try harder. So maybe you have to try harder, but you can do anything that anyone else can do. It's your path that you're on. It's the decision and the choices you make that are going to affect it, not some ethnic, some, something that like ethnicity that God gave you that you can't change. It's, it's your path. It's your pattern. There's so many things we can change that we act like we can't. You can be a morning person. You can be a good student. You can be closer. You can let your relationships flow better. You have to decide what's important to you. You decide the road that you're going down. You decide what the choices you make. I know you done made a ton of mistakes and you don't think you're, you, you think that you're way too far down the road, way too far down the wrong path. You can't fix your past. Yeah, I know, I already told you guys, we can't fix ourselves. We're not a computer. We have memories, not memory. You can't fix your past is what you think. And that is true. But you can change, but you can do, what you can do is pick up all that baggage, turn around, and start walking the other direction. If you change direction, things will actually change. If you change direction, things will actually change. So it's not knowing it. It's not hanging out with the right people. It's not, not hanging out with people who are doing the right things. It's you doing the right things. So if you change direction, things will actually change. We get to where we should be the same way we got to where we shouldn't be. And we got where we shouldn't be by making decisions we shouldn't have made. Let me say it again. Do you have that on the screen? It says, it says, we get to where we should be. 
the same way we got to where we shouldn't be. And we got where we shouldn't be by making decisions we shouldn't have made. Don't look for your, don't look for your problems. Look for your patterns. Mike, I don't know how to get off this path. I'm stuck. What do I do? I know I make it sound like it's so easy. All you gotta do is change. Well, changing is hard for us because we have these things called habits, and they're really hard to break. And I know that. Like all you have to do is stop doing what you're doing. Sounds so easy, but it's so hard. Trust me, I do have my faults. I have my failures. I have my struggles. I too struggle with walking on the wrong path sometimes. But the Bible tells us when we can't figure it out, just acknowledge Him. Proverbs 3 6. It says, In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And he will make your paths straight. So when you're struggling and you don't know how to get off this path, <clears throat> you let Jesus do it. You acknowledge Jesus. You find Jesus. Let, there's, a, there's a song that came out a few years ago. and I didn't like it at first, but my mother took this little part of it, and she just kept repeating it and repeating it and repeating it, and now the song sticks in my head often. And what my mother would say is, just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. Let me read you the lyrics of this song. <coughs> it says, life gets tough and times get hard. It's hard to find the truth in all the lies. If you're tired of wondering why your heart isn't healing, and nothing feels like home, because you're lost and alone, just screaming at the sky. When you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. There is power in the name, the name of Jesus. If the words won't come because you're too afraid to pray, just say Jesus. Whisper it now or shout it out, however it comes out. He hears your cry. Out of nowhere he will come. <clears throat> You've got to believe. It, he will rescue you. Just call out to the way, the truth, the life. When you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. There's power in the name, the name of Jesus. If the words won't come because you're too afraid to pray, there's just one name strong enough to save. There's it's just one name. There's just one name, Jesus. When you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. There's power in the name, the name of Jesus. If the words won't come because you're too afraid to pray, if the words won't come and you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. Do you know what comes right before Proverbs 3, 6? I read Proverbs 3, 6, and all your ways acknowledge in him, and he will make your path straight. Do you know what comes right before Proverbs 3, 6? My dad shakes his head. Proverbs 3, 5. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5. But what does it say? What does it say? And let me read that to you. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. <laughs> So together it reads like this. <coughs> together it reads like this. It says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. So here I've talked to you all, all day about how we can see it, how we can understand it, how we know that we know we're going down the wrong path if we just judge ourselves like we judge others. We know all that. But what we don't know is how do we change our path? Because habits are hard to break. Because the devil gets on our head and says, you're too far down this path. It's too late to change. We just lean on him. We'll let him do it for us. We'll let him fight our battles. As a Christian, people are watching you. People are following you. They go where you lead them. Your decisions affect far beyond just you. 
Every step you take on the wrong path, every time you refuse to see that your decisions are leading you, into, leading you to your problems, you're leading them to the same problems. So we got to lean on Jesus so that they lean on Jesus because they follow us. People think that when you go to church on Sunday, it puts this, this stigma on you that people think, oh, he knows what he's doing. Whether or not they're a Christian or not, 80%, I read 85% of people in America say that they, that they believe in Jesus Christ and call themselves, if you ask them what religion they are, they'll say Christian. Only 15% of them go to church every Sunday. Only 15% of them have a church. But 85% say that they're a Christian. So when they see you going to church, they think you know what you're doing. And they follow you. So when you make bad decisions, so do they. And that's, I know, you think I'm crazy. You think that. No, that's not true. That's not me, though. That's scripture. It's Proverbs 10, 17. It says, whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life. So if you do, remember earlier I read to you, and do them, if you do them, if you heed the instruction, you're on the path to life. Now this is where it gets right here. But he who rejects reproof leads others astray. So if you're not following them, if you're not changing direction, if you're not and do them, like I read in Matthew 7 earlier, if you're not doing that, you're leading others astray. Your path, your decision, your future that you can predict is not just your future, but you can look behind your kids and see that it's affecting theirs too. You can look behind your neighbors and see that, and you can see their future too, because where you're going, they're probably going to. Earlier I read you a scripture out of Matthew 7, I read, I read verse 24, it said, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does not and does them will be like a wise man. Most of you know the rest of the story. But let's read it anyway. And I told you that there's a children's church story that silently goes with it. <coughs> but I promised myself I'm not going to sing it. So, but let's read the rest of the story. It says, everyone who then hears these words of mine, that does them will be like a wise man, who built his house on the rock, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not, and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It wasn't just a little fall, but it, it felt great. It was, the great was the fall, it says. That's a big fall. Imagine this, if you will. Everyone knew that the house on the sand would fall. Every, they knew, because they've seen people do it before, they knew that building on the rock was harder, but they did it because they knew that it was going to stand firm. Everyone knew, everyone could have predicted that the house on the sand was going to fall. Everyone knew that the house on the sand, but they watched someone build theirs, and it looked so nice. It was built in half the time and cost half the money, and well, he, he did it, so why can't I? Before a big storm, they're not just one house on the sand, but now there are many. Because you did it and it looked pretty and it was sitting up there and there hasn't been a storm yet, so it's still up there and it looks nice and you're living in it. And you claim to be a Christian and you claim to make good decisions. So people start doing it and now a storm hasn't came and so other people are building their house on the sand. People fail to realize that tomorrow's weather may not be the same as today's. So what may have worked today may not work tomorrow. So if you're building on the sand, 
wait for a storm. So if you are building on the sand, wait for a storm to knock your house down. You already know that it's going to fail. I'm sorry. If you're building on the sand, don't wait to make for a storm to come and knock your house off. You already know that it's going to fall. And you know that people see yours all pretty. And that they're, they're modeling after you. And they're building on the sand too. So you're affecting your lives and tons of others. It's not time to wait for the storm to knock your house down. But take it and start building on the rock now. So that when the storm comes, you don't have that great fall. Start making better decisions now. Take the material and go build on solid principles. And don't do it alone. Tell all your neighbors that have been watching you, mimicking you, save them too. Fixing your patterns seems to fix people's problems. Fixing your patterns will, will fix other people's problems, not just your own. And Jesus said the greatest commandment was what? Love your neighbor as yourself. So here's the thing. If you're not fixing it for you, fix it for them because that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to impact them greater than us. He doesn't want us pulling a speck out of someone's eye when there's a log in ours. He wants them. He wants us pulling, pulling a. He doesn't want us pulling a speck out of someone's eye when there's a log in ours. He wants, but at the same time, he kind of does. Because he wants us to say, it doesn't matter that I have all these problems, I'm going to help others. I'm going to change other people's lives. Even with all my issues, I'm willing to be a servant. I'm willing to humble myself because I'm affecting others. I need to lead them to Christ. That's what Jesus wants us to do. So you need to realize that your decisions are affecting others. And then the, the great thing is, is that while you're fixing it to help others, it ends up helping yourself. Or while you're help, fixing it to help yourself, it ends up helping others. God is so great that way. He just, he just works backwards. And we don't understand it, but he does. I told you about this principle of the path that we would that we would be talking about for a while. Here it is. And uh, we're going to talk about it probably for the next two weeks. But here it is. It's simply direction determines destination. We'll talk about it much more in the coming weeks. But I encourage you to look at where, you, where you're going. And look at who's following you. Oftentimes, you'll see your future, and as a parent, you'll see theirs. If you want to see where they are going in life, check out the path that you are on. Start making better decisions. Build on what... <laughs> One thing that I'm very, very proud of as my pastoring in this church is that you guys are calling me and tell me what you're reading in the Bible. You guys are telling me, I read Luke with you in December. I read some of Acts with you in January. And you guys weren't people who read the Bible before. And that's exciting. That's exciting that I got you guys reading and I got you guys excited about, the, about reading the Word and about doing that. But now it's time to, to say, reading isn't enough. Let's apply it. Let's change our paths, change our directions. Let's change what we're doing in life. Direction determines destination. So we want to fix things if we want to get better. Not just as an individual, but as families and as a church. We have to change our direction. <clears throat> so we've taken one step, and now we know what to do. The next step is doing it. That's the limit. So... 
Brother, he knows my word and does them. So I took it to where now we know it. Now let's do it. I'm so glad that I have all of you guys, whether you're here or not, I know most of you guys will find time throughout the week to watch this. And I just want to challenge you and encourage you. Look hard at the path you're on. And if you need to change direction, change direction. And uh, don't be quiet about it, but let everyone know. Hey, I messed up, but I'm fixing it. You want to come with me? That's what we're supposed to do as Christians. Let's pray. Dear Father, Lord, I love you, Lord, and I thank you, Father God, for making us the way you made us, Lord. I thank you that we can see the path we're on when we really look. We can see that we're going to fail or that we're going to do good based on the decisions we make. But Father God, our problem so often is, is that we fail to know how to break the habits how to change, Father. So we all have our problems. We all have our sins. We all have our failures. We all have it, Father. But we don't know how to do it. We don't know how to change our path. Making that 360 and changing directions isn't easy for us. So, Father, we're giving it to you, Lord. We're going to try our best. We're going to make a decision, and we're going to move, and we're going to continue to move in the direction that you would have us, Father. But, Lord, we also know that Satan pulls. And the habits are hard. So we're giving it to you, Lord. We're saying Jesus. We're just saying Jesus, Lord. Your name is so powerful, Father. So we pray, God, that as we call out your name, that you're there for us, Father. That you help us, Lord. Not only help, not, not only as we, we call it to you, but Father, help us be help to others, Lord. Help us lead like we're supposed to lead as Christians, Father. Help us be the people that we need to be, Father. To, to not just grow this church, Father. Well, that is our goal. Lord, our greater goal is to grow this community, Lord, to help people change their destination. Lord, so help us change our destination so that the people following us change theirs. Lord, help us to, to give it to you, Lord, to fight our battles through worship and prayer, Father, and not through, through trying to trick people or trying to, and trying to fix it with, oh, I need more money or, oh, I need... Whatever I need, Lord, help us fix it the way that you would have us fix it, the real way, Father, by changing our patterns, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming, guys. See you next week.